Brethren, the presentation that I've taken from Solomon today is entitled The Working Tools. Now this is part one of a two-part presentation, and this particular first part concentrates on the medieval masons and their tools. The working tools tend to be the first pieces of ritual that we are encouraged to perform on the floor of the temple or meeting room. At the time, we perhaps focus merely on remembering the words and possibly on being heard, rather than on the symbolism and moral values of each tool. It's only in later years that questions tend to be asked in the Lodge of Instruction about these values. Did the operative masons associate moral values with each tool? If not, who did and why and when? Why were some tools selected as symbols in preference to others? Why were some Masonic values excluded? Let's turn to our early Masonic history. We can learn much about medieval building site from the early paintings and embroideries that still survive. Information can also be gathered from the gargoyles that surround our early cathedrals, abbeys and churches. They often feature masons at work with the tools of their trade. Another useful source is in early church records. The York fabric rolls from York Minster, recorded in 1399, list the following tools stored in their mason's lodge. 69 stone axes, 96 iron chisels, 24 mallets, one hatchet, one big gavel, one compass and two tracing boards. The high ratio of chisels to mallets arises from the need for frequent chisel sharpening. Every 10 minutes when working with hard stone and 20 minutes when working with soft stone. Academic research by L.F. Saltzman of Cambridge and D. Canoop and G.P. Jones of the University of Sheffield revealed that in medieval times the principal wooden tools might include squares, levels, rolls and plumb rolls, lines of pack thread, which we refer to as a skirret. These tools were often made from cask staves. There is no mention of wooden gavels. An extensive range of specialist tools was also available. Setting hammers with hollow heads for hard hewers, scapling hammers for rough layers, hammers with one and or two vertical steeled edges for fine dressing of the stone. Stone preparation in the quarry or in the adjoining site around the building might require the following. Brick axes, pick axes, trowels, chisels, hatchets, mattocks, crowbars, levers, wedges, pungeons and augers, mallets and mauls. In a book written in 1688, not long before the modern Grand Lodge was formed, its author noted that working tools, for example, shovel, hammer, hammer, chisel, pick and punch, were featured in the coat of arms of an aristocratic lodge member, although it was not suggested that they had been selected for their moral relevance or use in any form of ritual. Despite the introduction of the common gavel into the speculative first degree working tools, there is no reference to a gavel, common or otherwise, in any of the wide variation of infantries listed above, apart from that isolated one big gavel in the York fabric rolls of 1399. Surprisingly too, no use is made of any working tool in the operative ceremonies or in their catechisms until the early 18th century. We might reasonably assume, therefore, that in 1717 our founders started with a clean sheet finding the operatives' working tools devoid of any moralisation or inherited symbolism. Indeed, all evidence suggests that, for a hundred years or so after the formation of the modern Grand Lodge in 1717, the introduction of any symbolic significance to a mason's working tools was undertaken very cautiously indeed. As a postscript, Roy Spring, that eminent clerk of works at Salisbury Cathedral, and also a Freemason, commented 
that a working mason was likely to be far more interested in whether or not a tool had the right feel in the hand or if its edge was sharp than in any esoteric moral values. Such ideas were left for the churchmen and academics. A mason needed all his mental energy to stay safe, to feed and house his family and keep a lookout for the next profitable employment after this one. Now that's the end of this presentation, brethren. In the next presentation, the application of the operative's tools into speculative masonry will be studied. I hope you've enjoyed this and I look forward to being with you again. Thank you, brethren.